Hello. We know how to calculate a derivative using the first principle definition of the derivative, and we even approached some examples so far. The more practice you get, the better you're gonna be at it. So let's try another example in which we're gonna try to differentiate a function. So this first example, I'm going to differentiate the function f of x, which is equal to one over x, provided that x is different than zero. So after all, it's just a function, but I'm taking this uh, quotient, which is rather simple, because from my experience, too many students uh, still struggle working with uh, fractions. We can't have that at this level anymore. To ensure that everybody's up to speed for the lessons to come, I decided to include this example as well. So let's see. df dx, using the Leibniz notation, it's equal to limit when h approaches 0, from f of x plus h minus f of x over h. I'm going to replace the expression for those functions uh, directly, continuing here. So limit when h approaches 0, from, in the numerator, we're going to have f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h minus f of x, obviously it's 1 over x, and everything over h. Now in the numerator, we cannot perform that uh, difference between fractions until they have a common denominator. So I'm using this notation, for which I even used a different color to make it obvious that it's not part of the fraction, but so what I mean with this notation in blue is that for the first fraction, I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator with x. And in the, the second fraction, I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator with x plus h, so that both fractions have in the denominator x times x plus h. This will continue to be limit when h approaches 0 from the x over x times x plus h minus the second fraction becomes x plus h over x times x plus h. As you can see, we already have the common denominator and everything over h. And now I can perform that difference in the numerator. So we're going to say limit when h approaches 0. In the numerator, we're going to have x minus x minus h, because that minus was in front of the fraction, over the common denominator x times x plus h, and everything over h. x minus x is going to be 0, and we are left with uh, limit when h approaches 0 from, I'm going to take the numerator and uh, write it as a main fraction, so minus h over x times x plus h, and uh, the denominator that we had, h, I'm going to just multiply it times 1 over h. Now we can reduce the h in the numerator with the one in the denominator, and the limit becomes limit when h approaches 0 from minus 1 over x times x plus h. You, but now we can evaluate this limit by taking the value of 0 as h approaches 0, I can take this value and plug it into the expression. So all we are left is minus 1 over x squared. Let me just rewrite this expression once again. So d dx of 1 over x equals to minus 1 over x squared. And this is the derivative of the function 1 over x. So it's really not that complicated to calculate a derivative using the first principle definition of the derivative. The only thing that uh, it's inconvenient is the fact that you have to calculate a little too much. For a more complex uh, function, it starts to become uh, cumbersome. But don't worry, we'll find better ways in the next chapter. However, for now, let me take another example. Because as you remember in the lesson, I told you that some functions, even though they are continuous, they might not be differentiable at some particular point because of the sudden change in the graph of that uh, particular function. As you can see, I chose an example just like that, a function for which, as you can see on the graph, I have this uh, sudden change uh, when x is 2. As we already know, this function is not going to be differentiable when x is 2. We're going to prove that that's actually the case. So obviously this is a piecewise defined function. Let's explicitly uh, define it. f of x is defined as 2x plus 1 when x is less than 2 
and it's equal to minus x plus 7 when x is greater or equal than 2. What we want to determine is if uh, the derivative of f of x when x equals 2 exists or not. Once again, the derivative is going to be given by the first principal definition of the derivative, so f prime of 2 is going to be limit when h approaches 0 from f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. Now, since our function f of x is a piecewise defined function, we have to take those two situations when x is less than 2 or x is greater or equal with 2 uh, separately because we have this uh, different expression each time for f of x. We couldn't calculate otherwise these functions f of uh, 2 plus h or f of 2. Let's actually do that in the next step. I'm going to calculate f of 2 plus h is going to be I'm going to take the first branch when x is less than 2, so in that expression I'm going to replace x with uh, 2 plus h, so it's going to be 2 times 2 plus h plus 1, and that is equal to 2h plus 5. So this was the situation when x is less than 2. Let's put it here to, be, uh, to make it clear. Now if I calculate f of 2 plus h on the second branch, I'm going to take that second expression, so it's going to be minus 2 plus h plus 7, which results into minus h plus 5 and this is the result when x is greater or equal with 2. For uh, f of 2 I can calculate it directly, it's uh, quite easy so that's why I'm not going to write it uh, here uh, explicitly but you can if you want to. What I'm going to do next is cal calculate the derivative basically but I cannot calculate it directly because you see in the first principle definition of the derivative we have the limit when h approaches 0 directly but this is a piecewise defined function therefore we're gonna have to calculate the left hand limit and the right hand limit in order to determine the final limit and only if these left hand and right hand limits are defined they exist and they are actually equal then we can say uh, the limit exists and we have a derivative for this function but we have to calculate them separately or otherwise we won't be able to uh, determine anything. So let's calculate the left hand limit first. Limit when h approaches 0 from the left from f of uh, 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h is going to be limit when h approaches 0 from the left. Instead of f of 2 plus h we take the expression that we just calculated earlier when x is less than 2 obviously. So it's going to be 2h plus 5 minus f of 2, 2 times 2 in the first branch, replace that with 2. It's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1, so it's 5, minus 5. Everything over h. Now, plus 5 minus 5 is going to give us 0. So what's left is limit when h approaches 0 from the left from 2h over h. And again, we can get rid of the h, and the result is 2. So this is the left-hand limit, which is great. Now, the only thing we have to determine is the right hand limit and make sure it's the same, has the same value with this one. So limit when h approaches 0 from the right from f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h is going to be limit when h approaches 0 from the right and now instead of f of 2 plus h we're going to replace that with the expression we calculated earlier for the branch where x is greater or equal than 2 which was minus h plus 5 so that's what I'm gonna write here minus f of 2 on the second branch in the definition of the function we have minus 2 plus 7 which is 5 again which is great we're gonna get rid of the 5 and minus 5 that's 0 so all is left is minus h by h which is minus 1 right regardless of what value we have for h what we notice here is that both these limits exist but they are not equal which means, as we know by the definition of the limit, a limit when h approaches 0 from f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h does not exist because of the difference between these two values. With this we have proven that our piecewise defined function is not differentiable when x equals 2. I hope these examples clarify some of the questions that you may have had regarding derivatives. Thanks for watching.